Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Miles High podcast. This is Miles Monroe Jr., your host. Hope everyone is doing well today. I uh, want to thank you wherever you're listening from, whichever platform. Uh, thanks for joining in wherever you're watching, whether you're on YouTube or any of the other video pr- platforms. Uh, thanks for tuning in. Uh, you know, my goal with this podcast is to always entertain, educate, and elevate you miles above your fears, doubts, and any limitations that you think may exist. Always remembering that those limitations only exist in your mind. Uh, I'm feeling good today, man. I have the team here. Um, uh, everyone, everyone looks good. Everyone smells good. Everyone seems like they're having a good day today. Uh, but we're, we're, uh, I'm in a good mood. Um, for those that don't know, um, I recently got married. Your boy has been married now for a couple of months. Uh, jumped that broom. Uh, it's, it's 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 a good it's a good experience it's a good life um i'm happy with in in this marriage my uh my wife will be joining me at some point on the pod um for now she's playing the background though being shy and all but i'll get on the pod and we'll tell you a little bit about our stories uh, our story at some point or <laughs> our stories we we'll give give you guys a lot of um how we met and, and how we operate and work together and, and, and how we grow as a couple. Um, but I'm in a good mood, man. My, that's a little bit about my personal life. Um, from the business side, I uh, have a lot of things going on. Um, we're working on revamping our Monroe Go- Global app. Actually, let me give you a history about this app. So, you know, we, we sell uh, a bunch of our resources with DVDs and CDs, and we have... Uh, we, we make them available to the public, right? So we have a website and you could go on the website and you could buy the products. The, the problem that we were having was that the, uh, the international shipping costs for our international customers were just, it, it was just too high, right? And the reason was that we used to have cheaper international shipping, but we had issues guaranteeing the shipping would arrive, right? Imagine that, like we shipping out stuff and they were getting lost in the shipping process and we'd have to ship them again and they'll get lost again. So it wasn't working out for both sides. Uh, so we had to engage with a couple of shipping companies to figure out like what we can do, uh, settled on a decision, but that decision caused the international shipping prices to increase, uh, which is not always good for customers. And me with my business mind, I'm always trying to think of how can I, uh, alleviate you know some of the cost when it comes to our international customers so this is something that I've been thinking about you know we've, we've met a, with a bunch of uh, shipping companies to see if we could get the rates down and then 2020 hit the entire world shut down and people started digesting digital content like crazy and I recognized this and I was like yo this has to be something that us as an organization could tap into and that's where the idea for the app came from um, and I engaged with some developers. We kind of went back and forth for a couple of months, uh, k- kind of fine tuning uh, uh, what we wanted and how we wanted the app to operate. And then we got the app, the development started. And a couple of months later, we, we got the app done, finished, and uh, we made it available to the public. And the app is, has been serving its purpose, right? It's been, it's been going well. It's available on Android and Apple uh, platforms. But, you know, we listen to the feedback from our users and subscribers, and I, I, I really recognize that there are some improvements that we could, have, we, we could make. And that's what we're doing at this point. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm talking with developers now, and we're in the process of developing a new, func- a new app that has uh, better functionality, better features, all of this stuff. And I'm super excited for it because this app has been a brainchild of mine. And I don't know of any of you who have had like business ideas that you see that you had in your mind and you've brought it to reality. That's what this app is for me. And for me to be able to perfect it a little better, um, I'm excited for it. So it'll be available in a couple of months um, and I am looking forward to it. You can access it through all of the app stores you get your apps from. The app is called the Monroe Global App and 
and yeah, I hope you guys enjoy the content, man, and enjoy this new, uh, this this new improved app that we're we're going to be releasing in 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 just a few time, just a few months. Uh, secondly, the Monroe Institute of Leadership. Now, my dad has always talked about this institute that he wanted to establish, right? And he wanted people to have a place where they they can come and learn, uh, learn biblical principles, learn about leadership and purpose and and developing oneself. Um, and we didn't want that that dream or that vision to die with him, right? So our organization is carrying on that vision, and we've also been working with some curriculum developers and course developers, and we're in the process of releasing our first two courses uh, that com that's coming from the Monroe Institute of Leadership. That'll happen later on this summer, um, summer 2023. Um, I'm super excited for that. You know, this is that has been a long a long time coming i've been working on this for man i want to say like seven eight years now trying to find the right people and and the 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 right people with the right mindset you know to to really get this done and i think we have that now um so look out for that that's just a couple of things that we have working on you know that's just a little bit about um my life my personal life and and how i operate with uh the businesses and everything that i do uh, it keeps me super busy. Um, my wife works along with me, and we have a, a number of other uh, contractors that work along with us that help us to to get everything that we have on our on our table to get them done. Um, all the goals that we set each year, uh, we accomplish them because you know, we have a, a good team around us, and um, I'm, I'm just excited for what the future holds. And now I'm, I'm able to kind of share all of that with you <clears throat> through this through this podcast, through this platform. Um, and I'm just happy you guys are, are able to enjoy and embark on this journey with me, right? Um, so what do I want to talk about today? So, you know, me being business-minded, I, I wanted to use this particular episode just to, to discuss uh, some things, some keys that I've, that, that I've learned over the years and that I use... Um, with everything that I do, you know, in the, the business ideas that I come up with, I, I, I go through these keys and I mark each one off um, in hopes that, you know, I'm able to make whatever that idea is successful. And this entire, uh, these principles and these keys, they, these came actually from a teaching that my dad did a couple of years ago, you know, in my editing process, uh, when we're developing the resources, you know, I'm able to listen to a lot of the content uh, that he would have recorded or that we would have recorded. And um, there's a there's a, a, a teaching that he did um, on business success. It's actually called the five keys to business success or the five kingdom keys to business success. Uh, if you're interested, I would recommend you uh, go and watch that on our YouTube channel, or it's actually available on our app, so you could download the app and enjoy it there as well. The title of it again is Five Key, Five Kingdom Keys to B Business Success. And what he what he did with that particular teaching uh, was something that kind of blew my mind because he it was rooted in a scripture verse, a Bible verse that I have been reading, reciting, and and just learning from just about my entire life, right? And it's a verse in Genesis. And it's something that, you know, like I said, we've, I've heard a million times before, but the pers perspective that it was taught that day, it, it was just something that was mind blowing for me. And it kind of changed the way I viewed a lot of the, uh, the processes and the ideas, my creativity, the, the way that I, I uh, get everything out. Um, I got to sit up for this one because I, I really want to get into what exactly this, uh, this verse says, right? And I, I, the particular verse I want to go over is, or go through is Genesis 1 verse 28. But I want to start with Genesis 1 verse 26, right? So I'll just read it for you. So Genesis 1 verse 26 says, And God said, Let us make man in our image, in our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over the cattle, and over the earth, and over everything that creepeth on the earth. So in this verse, the main thing I just want to point out is God said, let us make man in our image and after our likeness and let them have dominion, right? So the purpose that God created us was for us to have dominion. And then two verses later, God explains exactly how we were to have 
uh, that dominion or make that dominion happen for us, right? And he gave us five key ways, five key principles that we were to use. So I'm going to read that verse. So Genesis 1 verse 28 says, and God blessed them. And this is after he created uh, male and female. He said, it says, God blessed them and said to them, be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea, the fowl of the air, and over everything that moveth on the ground. So God said to be fruitful, to multiply, to replenish, to subdue, and to have dominion. And, you know, that, those, those, quite often we just read that verse and, and don't really take heed or really understand what is being said, right? So I just want to kind of go through how that, how this revelation has changed me and the way I look at and think about everything that when it comes to the way I live and the way I, the, the way I process things. Um, we got to fly in here somewhere. <laughs> yes. This fly is crazy. <laughs> Unwanted guests. <laughs> but um, <laughs> yeah, he wants to be a part of the podcast, apparently. <laughs> welcome. Everyone's welcome. Um, talk about a fly on the wall, right? So the five keys that, that we... Um, we are given in, the, in this verse. Again, it's to be fruitful, to multiply, to replenish, to subdue, and then to have dominion. So the first one is to be fruitful. And simply put, being fruitful means to be productive, right? God, God wants us to produce something. Now, I know when everyone has that and everyone has this verse, we, the first thing we think about is babies, right? We're just ready to produce. I'm ready to have kids. God, God wants me to have kids, start this family, you know, uh, develop and nurture my family, allow my family to grow, and we dominate with my family, right? And that's, that's not incorrect, right? Absolutely, we, that's one of the things that he wanted us to do. But the same time God gave us seed to produce offspring and, and kids, he also gave us seed uh, to produce based on our ability and skill level, right? He has planted and, and given us all of these skills and talents and, and things that we have within us in order for us to be productive, right? And he wants us to use those skills and talents to be productive. So be fruitful was the first thing that he said. He wants us to be productive. He wants us to produce something. And then secondly, he wants us to multiply. And that simply means to increase in number, right? So once you produce something, the, the next step should be to multiply it, right? So think about uh, Steve Jobs, for example, when he first created, well, his first creation was the iPod, right? Well, the first major creation in our generation was the iPod. You know, he created the first iPod. Like, imagine that iPod prototype, right? I'm sure he was proud of that. He felt like he was being productive. He produced something. And then once they perfected uh, the product, it was time to multiply it. Okay, how can we produce this product in mass amounts? to make available to the public, right? And that's simply what, what multiply is, C creating a system to where um, the, the initial product that was created could be multiplied into numerous more products. And then thirdly, we, we're, we are to replenish, right? So you go through the process of producing, you're multiplying, and then once you multiply, let's say you multiply, or let's use Steve Jobs for an example, just stick with that, stick with that example. In his multiplication uh, point, he created and multiplied his one product into a thousand products, right? And those 1,000 products so sell. Now he has to replenish that stock, right? And that's what God wants us to do. He wants us to, to, build, to build it back up to the multi multiplication of where it was, right? And I, I take it even a step further with uh, replenishing. I, I think we're all supposed to, supposed to refine, right? So not only replenish, but we're refining the product, making the product better, using the new technology that, that come out, using the new creativity that we have, the new ideas that we, you know, as we go through life, we see and hear things and observe things, and you, you're, you're consistently looking at ways that you can add those into the product to make them better for the public, right? So it's, it's refining the product. Like, like the app, for example, right? I created this app. Um, multiplied it and made it available to the public, right? Uh, and then really got the feedback from our, our users and subscribers and understood that, okay, I needed to refine this product a bit more and that's exactly what we're doing right now. So I, like I say, I use these keys, these, these steps in everything that I do, especially when it comes to business um, because it's the, it's the foundational mandate that we've been given 
from God himself, right, to be successful in everything that we do, right? So once we replenish, once we're able to develop these systems and uh, increase, increase our in number and multiply and continue to do that on a, on a continuous basis, right? All the systems are working, the manufacturing systems are working. Even if you don't have a product, you have a service, right? You're able to service you started maybe servicing 100 people, then you increased to 200 and then 500, right? You're consistently trying to uh, scale your business or scale the things that you do, right? And then the next step is to subdue. And, th and to subdue simply means to control and manage. You're, you're simply supposed to control your market, control the, the production of your product, the, the, the success of your product, you're managing everything, managing the people around you, managing the staff, managing the, the quality of the product. You're just you're, you're managing the, the, sh the hold you have on your market. Right. You, once you go through the steps of producing, multiplying, replenishing or refining and then subduing, you, you gain a hold of the market. Right. So let's go back to the to the Steve Jobs example. Apple did such a good job producing the uh, the iPod, the initial you know, product of our generation. Uh, that people don't use CD players no more. They don't use uh, tape players no more. Music and everything went digital because of what Jobs was able to produce, right? And talk about control and, and a, a person that, or a company that was, an uh, organization that was able to uh, manage and control an entire industry, right? That's, that's the depth and the level of control and manage that we're supposed to get to in all that we do. Um, you change, the, you change the entire industry, you change the, the hole that you initially have or change the direction or the tra trajectory of uh, the entire industry. And, and that's what Jobs did, right? He subdued the market, subdued uh, the entire industry because of the control that he had. And then he, he dominated, right? He mastered the iPod. And then once you're able to master one part of the business, you're able to start it over, but introduce new products and new services to the, to, to the business. And that's how you evolve and, and you start to create uh, these uh, different arms of the company, different uh, products that the company is able to produce. Um, and all, it all comes from this simple verse, right? So just look, look at any large, successful organization that has been around for however long it's been around. You know, it could be 30, 40 years, or it could be five to 10 years, right? Doesn't matter the, matter the age. But if you look at their success, you can pinpoint each level of their success with each of these keys. They were fruitful in being productive. They were able to multiply the products that they were making. Uh, they were able to replenish that stock that was multiplied. And then they were able to subdue and control the market and it allowed them to have dominion and master. Uh, Chick-fil-A, like that's, Chick-fil-A is a great example, right? Because uh, I, I, uh, Chick-fil-A is a company that, <laughs> don't be shy, <laughs> don't be shy. That's my wife talking, by the way, off camera. Producing. Uh, she's, <laughs> she's say she's producing the I'm show. Subduing. Thank you, my love. Um, but Chick-fil-A, yes, absolutely. Chick-fil-A Chick and, and the owner of Chick-fil-A, the founder of Chick-fil-A, uh, is, a, is, a, is, a, is a Christian, right? He, he believes in kingdom principles and all of these stuff. And he found a, a, a product that he was good at producing, right? Chicken. You go to Chick-fil-A, you don't, you don't go to Chick-fil-A for burgers, right? They don't sell burgers. You, you, can't, get, you can't find a, a hamburger or a cheeseburger at Chick-fil-A. They know what they are good at, and it's chicken. And some people like it more than others, right? Because there's a lot of competition out there, but... You know, Chick-fil-A has been able to uh, subdue their market share or subdue a corner of the market that no one else is able to touch. And I think it's it has a lot to do with these 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 different keys. Right. Because they don't they don't have to experiment with uh, hamburgers or compete with other franchises that produce uh, hamburgers or any other non chicken products. Right. Because they have such a hole in the market and have, have re refined their products have worked on the things that they're able to do, and they dominate, they, they master their industry. Um, and that's what, that's what I think we're supposed to be doing. Uh, so Genesis 1 verse 28, it wasn't just talking about us producing kids. It wasn't just talking about us raising a family or starting a family. It was really uh, telling us uh, and, and encouraging us to 
uh, really develop from within, right? The gifts and talents that we have. As talented as we are as a race, as, as, a human, be as human beings, um, we, we, are, we are filled with multiple gifts, multiple talents that we can do. God has given us so much seed on the inside. And I think it's, it's up to us to discover what those seeds are so that we can start producing and being productive. Um, and you, you don't have to be the owner of a business to be productive, right? You can be productive as being a part of an organization. Like I look at my team around me, like each of these individuals are productive in their own area of gifting, right? And, and I think that's what we're supposed to do. We, we carve out our, our niche market within whatever industry or company or organization that we're in. Uh, and we go through these five steps. We be productive. We're able to multiply. We, we replenish and refine our gifts, the product that we produce, uh, and be able to control and manage our emotions, our decisions, our, our, our salaries, the money that we're able to make, and then we're able to dominate and master um, the things and everything that we do. Um, and yeah, man, that, that, you know, again, that, the realization of that teaching changed my, pers my perspective of business, right? Because, you know, we, we kind of look at the Bible as this religious book, but the Bible is actually a practical book, and it, it's, it gives us practical instructions on how we should live, how we, sh how we can be successful in life. Like, there's nothing you're, that you're going to go through in your life that you can't find an answer to or a, a resolution to within the Bible. Um, regardless of what it is, because nothing, there's nothing new on the face of the earth, right? The same problems and issues that uh, we're facing in today's world were the same issues that they were facing uh, 2,000 years ago. I, that we just have like much more bigger weapons and maybe a little bit more crazier people, but that's neither here nor there, right? Like, it's just like it's it's the way we evolve as as humans, but fundamentally, all the issues are still the same. Um, so the Bible is a good source of information, a good source of understanding, and a good source of wisdom. Uh, and I'm, I'm, I, I just love when I'm able to use these simple verses and, and passages from the Bible and able to apply them to my daily life. Um, and I just wanted to share that because that, you know, that being able to apply these keys to achieve business success or even just personal success in your life, you know, I, I think is something that we should all hope to achieve. Um, and I'm just excited that I was able to, to share that with you guys today, right? Um, now we've come to the, to the segment of the episode where I get to share a milestone with you. And as you know, these are, this is just some encouraging words that I, I want to say to you um, in parting, right? For you to just go off and think about, maybe apply it and try apply it. Um, and you can, you know, send me some comments or share your, your opinions and some feedback you know, to how you feel uh, this, this milestone was able to assist you. And today's milestone is something simple. It's w one of my uh, most favorite quotes that I've heard from my dad. And it's simply, nothing changes until your mind changes. Uh, I think anything that we do in life, um, if, we're, if we're looking for change, if we're looking to change ourselves, if we're looking to change the people around us or the things around us, uh, we're not going to start or make that change. <laughs> Unless, that, uh, unless our mind changes first. Excuse the phone in the background. Um, quiet on the set, guys. <laughs> <laughs> but nah, nothing changes until your mind changes. I, I, I think that's such an important uh, th concept uh, uh, that we need to allow to really set in with us, right? And I just want to encourage you to continue to think outside of the box, uh, not to settle for the the conditioning that we've experienced growing up as kids, uh, always have an open mind. Be open to trying new things, doing new things. Uh, nothing changes until your mind changes. All right. That brings us to the end of this episode. Thank you guys for joining, man. I think uh, being able to share these five keys for business, business success uh, does my heart well. I love business. I love the things that I'm able to do as a creative. Um, and being able to share that with you uh, just brings, brings, makes me happy. I'm very happy. <laughs> uh, but as always, you know, I always seek to entertain, educate, and elevate you miles high above your 
fears, your doubts, and any limitations that you think exist. But always keep in mind that those limitations only exist in your mind. I'll see you guys next time. Stay blessed.